you want to apply for a PhD and you have no idea where to start, this is the video for you. I'm so sorry that I didn't make this video before and I made tons of personal statements and interviews and blah 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 and that's all important, but how do you actually get started? Where do you begin? How do you find a PhD? How do you find the university? How do you find a program? How do you find a supervisor? How do you find funding? All of that stuff. How do you prepare to actually apply? So this video, we're going to cover all the steps that you take before you apply. This is the video I should have made a long time ago, but here it is now. Okay, welcome to my desk. This is where all the fun happens. I mean, all the stress. I am going to pretend that I'm here up from five years ago. I haven't applied. I have no idea where I'm applying. I just know I want to do a PhD. And now I'm like, okay, let's find something. I don't really know exactly what kind of project I want to do. I just sort of know the field, okay? Um, which is oncology. So how do I find a PhD in oncology somewhere, anywhere that seems nice? I'm an international student, um, so I have to find the right kind of funding or scholarship. Where do I look? What do I do? How do I prepare? You'll see. And it's 2 a.m. <laughs> PhD in oncology, UK, let's say. I want to go to the UK. Okay, what do we have? We have the University of Cambridge, you go on the program, we have UCL, we have Oxford, we have Manchester. So you really want to go to all these universities' websites and see what they have. So let's start with Manchester. They're telling you a little bit about the PhD. It looks like it's a three to four years PhD with one to two years MPhil before it. Um, or it's the same program where you can either do an MPhil or you can continue on year three or four and do a PhD. So actually this might be something you might want to check with the university. You look at the deadlines um, if you want to start in January, then you have to apply on the 15th of October, the year before. And if you want to get into April, then you have to apply by 15th of January, etc, etc tells you a little bit about the program and here's the important bit it tells you the fees so um this is pretty standard where there's a uk rate and then there's an international rate which is almost like triple sometimes oh more than that look at that five times five is 25 this is five times higher for international students right so that is absolutely insane Let's see if they have any scholarships. Well, let's look at the entry requirements, actually. You have to pass um, the IELTS or uh, the TOEFL or TIFL. I think it's called TOEFL. And what else? What else do they want? Okay, so they want you to have at least an upper second class BSc degree. Okay. Um, or the equivalent from outside the UK, but you're gonna to have to convince them. So you might need some kind of um, equivalency certificate or something like that. Um, now look at this, a lower class, it's lower second class bachelor's could be acceptable, but then you would need a master's with like a merit, okay? Um, how to apply, it's just telling you that, but what I'm interested in is, can I actually, get anything on funding like where is the funding aha so scholarships and bursaries now funded projects are promoted throughout the year and so it looks like if you want to apply to this university and this program you would have to look out for specific projects that are funded so now let's have a look at the funded programs or the funding opportunities pages so literally it is a lot of you know you just have to read and go into detail blah 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 um so here are their funded programs um you know you can go through all of these see if you are available or uh, eligible for any of these but let's look at cancer which is actually one of the keywords they suggested so You've got the PhD training scheme. Um, you've got these Manchester Institute PhD students. So we are going to have to go look into that. And we're going to have to look into this. Um, blah, 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 blah. Then it gives, etc, 
sends you to another freaking website. Ugh, I know. It's already exhausting. They already exhaust you right from here. Oh, now they want to... What? I don't have a username or password right now. Are you dumb? What? What? It's hidden behind a... Okay, this is ridiculous. What the hell, guys? This was one of the other links that they had sent me to. So now let's go look at projects. Here you are. The discipline, let's say biological sciences. And let's see, funding status. I'm not a self-funded student. So now let's see these two seem a little interesting. Are you interested? Human microbiome to pediatric cancer or ubiquitin and blah 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 in the DNA damage response. Let's let's go with this chromosomal instability. It says it's a self-funded PhD studentship, so nah, you don't want to do that. Okay, you don't want to pay pay for a PhD, please. That's gonna kill you. Um, let's look at some other things and blah 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 blah. Okay, so it looks like Manchester is a little bit shit right now and they don't have any opportunities that you are going to be able to find if you are an international student trying to do oncology so let's go look at the cambridge university website now shall we okay so this is the cambridge landing page phd in oncology um they're actually closed for this year so you can't actually join this year if you want to join october of this year um, you can still actually apply up until May. However, if you really, you should apply by December or January, like the first deadline, if you want to be eligible for the scholarships, okay? These people are weird as well. Okay, so in Cambridge, now it looks like, um, they want you to actually go to a supervisor so check out the research profiles and email those you are interested in um studying with to then ask them okay do you offer a project blah 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 so um this is a little bit more difficult um you know because then like this is this happens if you know somebody that you really want to work with or you've read a lot of their papers or they're like a collaborator and you're like oh my gosh i would love to do a phd with you this is the route you would go down but otherwise the easiest thing to do is to find advertised projects so i am again trying to find this why is it so hard in here man okay jobs and studentships let's have a look here please god may there be something i need to show my freaking youtuber viewers okay, all job vacancies are advertised here on the university's job website let's go here Okay, we do see something. Um, there's literally only like five jobs and they're all research associates. No PhD studentships. Oh, here. Okay, studentships. Let's go here. Ooh, this is the page you'd want to find at any university. So, let's see what they have. They have Department of Pathology, Chemistry, Engineering, blah, blah, blah. This is great. Oh, Cambridge, you're already way better than Manchester right now. Okay. Um, what were we doing? We were doing cancer, right? Okay, so this is the only cancer one I can see right now. Let's click on it. Let's see what they want from us. Who is it with? What's going on? Hello. Okay, so this is with Professor Greg Hannon and Dr. Kirsty uh, Sawuka. And this is what they want to work on. Okay, so now it's going to tell you a little bit of the project details. Um what they want from the candidate, this kind of further reading, then eligibility. Now, this is cool. No uh, nationality restrictions. Amazing. What is it? It's a fully funded one, and you get a stipend of 21000 This is a lot, okay? Like, people usually get, like, 15 or something as a student. So this one is super cool, funded by Breast Cancer Now. Um, everything looks great. And the deadline is like 12th of March. So this, you know, you could definitely apply to. Then you go on like the how to apply thing to look at what you need, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, um, then what you want to do is read the project a little bit in more detail and see if you can apply to this. But okay, so this one, great. Okay, you found one project that you could possibly apply to. Just make sure you're actually interested in what they're doing and that you have some sort of you know, their, their preferred um, 
the preferred criteria, so for example, like a strong background in genetics, molecular biology, biochemistry with an interest in cancer therapy. They also want a minimum of six months of research experience. So, you know, they want to see all that. So now let's go look at UCL. Here again, oncology and field PhD, blah, 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 you know, apply for this course. Again, you want to see projects. You know how, how Cambridge had advertised their projects? That's how you want to, you want to go, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, again, here, next steps, you want to find a supervisor and funding. So again, you can check the Cancer Institute studentships to apply for specific projects with grants. That's the good thing. When projects are advertised, they usually come with funding. If you contact a potential supervisor, then you're going to have to find your own funding or you're going to have to apply with them or do something. It's just a little bit more long-winded and hassle hassle-y. So let's go to the UCL studentships. Let's see if we find something. Um, ooh, okay, look, there's a couple. Hey, I'm very impressed again. So, you've got this one. Oh, very close. Oh, no, it passed. Wait, what? 2023? What's up with them? Have they not advertised their stuff? The BBSRC is closed as well. Whoops. Oh, no, this is also closed, so, um, that's a little bit sad. Um, okay. How about Oxford? Do we have anything? Let's see. Please don't disappoint me, Oxford. So, you know, you just want to find quickly, like, a list of projects. That's what you want to find in every university. And wow, they've got a lot. What the heck? But look at this. Now, to be considered for scholarship, you should have applied by December 1st. So that's really like, you know, this, these people, December 1st to 2023 deadline applicants, they are going to get in. Um, October of 2024 so it's like a long process you know if you want to apply next year you have to really start the year before um, but nevertheless I'm just interested in seeing if they came with funding okay um, these I think are the competition based app projects I've seen these before so the way these ones work is that our department kind of advertised all these projects but um and they had like funding for say 20 students and so you would apply to the program uh, and you choose your top project and then they will select the top 20 students and they will give them funding basically and that's the CRUK one and then the other one that's available is the Clarendon one which is the Oxford University Central one so it's incredibly competitive because it's not like department based it's like literally everybody who gets into Oxford is competing for that um so um and then and then we will also look at other scholarships on the websites but first you have to find a project so, okay, now let's go into something that is, uh, I hope, a little bit more useful uh, and broader because then you don't have to go to individual universities' websites. But if you're interested in a single university, this is the way to go. But let's let's go to now findaphd.com, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. Now they have 5,499 PhD projects. Haha, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, so let's search for cancer. And then let's um, go to, my God, enough with these ads. Now let's go to the UK, um, okay, and then you can even choose like specific cities and blah, blah, blah. You can choose a discipline, but I've just written cancer there, so, you know, it should be fine. Funding. I am not a UK student, I'm a non-European student. And again, you don't select I'm a self-funded. That's only if you actually want to pay for your thing. Please, please, please don't do that. Or if you have your own funding from somewhere else. In that case, I'm so envious of you. Okay, so now you've got 145 cancer PhD projects for non-European students which comes with funding, which is amazing. And now look at this. I was at the Department of Oncology's website, right? But there's a cancer um, PhD project at the Nuffield, which 
unless I went to their website, I wouldn't have seen it. And so this is really amazing that you can literally see all the projects. There's one in Bristol, Kingston, you know, everything. So now you can literally, ah, this is the one we just saw, right? The breast cancer one. So it's here as well. So literally every single PhD project is going to be advertised here. So this is what you really want to do. Actually, just, you know, everything else that I, I um, showed you, leave that for later. Start and like once you've selected a project from findaphd.com, then go here look, to look at, you know, funding and admissions process, blah, blah, blah. But start from here, I would say. So now let's see, I want to look at, ooh, this is so interesting, autoimmunity and cancer. Wow, I actually know these people, well, not personally, but I know of them. Um, let's see what this is about. First of April, wow. And esophageal cancer, immune oncology, this is like a really cool project to apply to. I'm interested in the funding, where's the funding, where's the funding, where's the funding? Okay, so... This is amazing. So the Ludwig, you get a studentship there for four years. You get an, a tax-free stipend of 21000 and you get fees at home or international rates. So, so they'll cover all your fees and you'll get a stipend. This is the kind of project you want to find, okay? But this is going to be, like, insanely competitive. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're good now. You know, you, you see a project. I'm very excited. These were some great finds and let's end the video here because it's been a little bit long but in the next video I'm going to go over okay what do you do next now that you've found potential projects how do you vet the supervisor how do you think about whether you're interested or not how much reading do you need to do how do you contact the supervisor how do you you know just the next steps okay there's still a lot to do before we actually get to applying so this is what I'll leave with you with today and catch you in the next one. Bye.